I started playing golf um, when I worked at SMR Technologies in Richwood. We had a golf league and after work on Tuesdays, we would go play golf. And you know, back then <clears throat> we had to carry our golf bags uh, and they were big and heavy, but we didn't think anything about it because everybody, everybody carried their golf bag. And then one day a fella came and he had a pull cart, a golf pull cart. And then people started getting golf pull carts. I only have one and I can't remember uh, what I did with it. I sort of wished I had saved it. You know, we accumulate so much stuff. You know, I have accumulated four sets of golf clubs. Four sets. Now, do I need four sets of golf clubs? No, I don't need four sets of golf clubs. I can't hit the ones I have. But things, stuff, stuff is hard to get rid of. Uh, stuff has value to us. One set of those golf clubs are the first set I ever got. And my father bought them for me. And, you know, I don't need them, but, you know, they're hard to get rid of. I made a set of golf clubs, you know. Uh, I don't want to get rid of them, yet we accumulate so much stuff. You know, that golf pull cart, it was invented. It came about in 1970. That's when that came about, the golf pull cart. The other day I went to Texas and I had to pack. And I started thinking about suitcases. You know, remember when you had to carry and lug suitcases throughout the airport or wherever you went? And then all of a sudden they came, came out with a suitcase that had wheels on it. And you know, I can't imagine, I can't imagine uh, going anywhere and have, having to lug a suitcase. But you know what? You go, you go and open the closet door of the house I live in and you'll see suitcases piled up. Now, why do I need those suitcases? I don't. I'm not going to use them because they're too hard to lug around. I'm going to use the one that is on wheels. And you know when that was invented? I looked this up. 1954. It's been a long time. I've only had one a number of years, but that was invented in 1954. We have so much stuff. I, I was packing to go to Texas, and I was going through the closet to, to get some clothes to pack, and I got too many pairs of pants. I've just got pants all over the place. I have too many shirts. I got shoes stacked on top of each other. Shoes I never wear anymore, but you know they're hard to get rid of. Why? Because you might need them someday for something. And neckties, neckties. Oh, I got rid of some neckties, but you know what? I had to throw them in the bag and turn my head because I didn't want to get rid of them because some of them people gave to me and they were hard to get rid of. We have so much stuff. We accumulate so much stuff. Drive down the road and look at a house, any house. If it has a, a, a garage in front of it, a nice two car garage, usually the cars are sitting out front. 
You want to know why? Because people put stuff in their garages and they can't get their cars in them. They have so much stuff everywhere. Rent a shed. That's one of the most thriving businesses in the world now. Rent a shed, rent a storage shed. They're everywhere. Why are they? Because we have so much stuff that we have nowhere to put it. And we go and we pay to store stuff. The people who own those sheds bet that we will continue to accumulate stuff. And guess what? I think we probably will. If you're looking for a house and there's just two of you, you want three bedrooms, three bedrooms in a garage, just two of you. Why do you want it? To put your stuff in because you have so much stuff. You know I'm right. We all have too much stuff. And you know, you can go and you hear people say, you can't take it with you. You can't take it with you. You can't take it to the kingdom of God. You've heard it said we don't take anything with us. Do you think that's true? I believe we do take some things with us. We do take some things with us. There are some things that go with us. Jesus was <clears throat> standing outside of Jerusalem. It was night. It was darkness. And Jerusalem has two gates, one at the north and one at the south, two wide, big gates. But at night, they closed that gate. And there was a narrow, a very narrow gate at the side, and they opened that narrow gate. And I can imagine Jesus watching a fellow come up to the gate, a rich person that had a lot of stuff on his camel and he could not get it through the gate. And what he had to do, he had to unload some of that stuff, but some of it made it through. And then Jesus told the people, they knew about the gates in Jerusalem. They knew about the wide gate and the narrow gate. And he said, it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than it is for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle. It's not impossible. Everything is possible with God. You know, if Jesus looked at the people I'm around, the people I am speaking to, he would consider us rich because we have so much stuff. Each and every one of us, I think he would consider rich. We are people that have a lot of stuff and we can't take all that stuff with us, but we can take some things. You do take some things with you. You take a decision about this man, Jesus, whether you've accepted the good news of the gospel that he came here and he died for each and every one of us. You take that to the narrow gate. And also we take our work. What have we done with the good news of Jesus Christ? Have we shared it? Have we talked to people about it? And oh yes, you know what? I guarantee that I'll take this book with me because this has been my work. Not only will I take this book, I'll take all those sermons I've ever preached because that has been my work. And I'll stand and I'll, I'll give an account of what I've done. I remember when I was just about to graduate from Emory, I had to go before a committee. Huh? Now listen to this. In that committee, there were three people. One was listed 
as one of the top 10 preachers in the world, Fred B. Craddock. Another one just lost a Senate race in Georgia. And another one was considered an expert, an expert on Appalachian culture. I walked in and I looked at him and I thought to myself, I'm the expert in Appalachian culture. I had to preach a sermon before them. I had to let them read my dissertation and I had to give an account of what I did in the homeless, homeless shelter. And they stood and they made me give an account of that. You know, when I get to that narrow gate, I'm not gonna have much stuff. I'm gonna have my decision about Jesus Christ and what I've done with that. And you know who's gonna be standing at the gate. He is the gate. He is the narrow way. Jesus will be standing at the gate. Amen. No, 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 no. Say you don't need no diamond rings and I'll be satisfied. Tell me that you want the kind of things that money just can't buy. I don't care too much for money, money can't buy me love. Just can't buy